Hello and welcome to theCUBE's coverage here. We are in the lake house at Databricks, Data Plus AI Summit's CUBE coverage. We are co-locating with Databricks' massive stage here. This is their media hub, Central. The CUBE is going to be here for two days, wall-to-wall -wall coverage. I'm joined by our CUBE analyst, new CUBE, Rob Streche. Rob, we've been on a tour since KubeCon in Amsterdam. What a whirlwind. Oh, and yeah. uh, AI is center stage. Yeah, Great to see you. It's data week, too. So this <laughs> is uh, really exciting to be here and talking all about AI and data and how it's really going to turn. I just dropped an exclusive interview I had with Matt Garman who was steering the ship of Amazon to the promised land of generative AI. Google had an event in Seattle, all developers. Snowflake had an event in Las Vegas and here in Databricks in San Francisco, you got Databricks. It's data week, everything's happening. Everyone wants that prize. The whole industry wants to win the mind share of this massively surging developer community. And we've said, Rob, we've been on the Cube record now for months, open source will win. And you, you heard from Ali Godsey today on stage, it's very clear that open source is a big theme of their, their history and their future and their present. And what, what's more exciting is he even dropped a few bombs out there by saying, we're going to end the format wars with, with uh, this uniform layer, bringing things together on the metadata. I mean, bold move, Databricks really accelerating the game in the open. It's going to put a direct strike on Snowflake. It's going to hopefully level the playing field. We'll see what's real. We're going to dig into the analysis. What was your take? Yeah, I, I think it was really well put together. I, I think there was a, a lot of uh, going through it at rapid pace today, and I, I think they were really looking at how do they get to all of the content they had to get through. And I think a lot of it was around how is generative AI going to develop and how do you make it easier? I think also it was unified governance and how you can bring that together and doc democratization of yeah. analytics as well. And I think that's a big piece of it. Those were kind of the three big themes that they're taking with them and taking forward. One of the things I noticed knowing Ali Godsey from since the beginning of Databricks, he's been a candid CUBE alumni, um, he was con a mix of ex super excited and nervous because it was so crowded in there. I've never seen that audience that big for Databricks. He was delivering the Lake House uh, positioning 3.0, which he was you know, a combination of Lake and House Data Warehouse. It's interesting, they're kind of reinventing Data Warehouse, throwing the word Lake around it, but that's kind of their focus. They're trying to get back into that world and modernize it, create a unified layer. And some things I liked was the Delta sharing, the Unity catalog, and this, this um, format wars ending with Uniform, their, their positioning. I thought that was clever, and just the sheer open source penetration that has legs, and, and I think the question will be, will that be adopted? Yeah, I, I agree. I think it's, it's going to be interesting. I think, you know, uh, Ali was kind of pre-briefed us a little bit yesterday on this stuff, and I, I asked some questions around some of these things, and I think one that you're mentioning around the whole ending the war, it really, the, it's on by default, being able to do all those three different formats. Uh, obviously, Delta Lake is always there, but the other two formats and bringing that in, I think what's key about this and what's going to be key in the future is that it gives much more spread across there. And if you look at some of the other uh, announcements that they're making, they're really focused on how they have a control plane, that data control plane going forward. And I think that's where the battle lines have been really underneath AI, that's where the battle lines are being drawn with them and Snowflake. Well, you know, we had uh, Ali Godsey on our SuperCloud event too, uh, original, I should say, SuperCloud 1, our inaugural event. He was also a keynote uh, exclusive for our reInvent covers last year. And now with this Databricks, Data Plus AI, every company will be a Gen AI company, it's, and that's his focus. You heard a lot of, not a lot of multi-cloud, because we like to bring that term up, SuperCloud, Having Microsoft's CEO, Satya Nadella, on stage or remote in, Skyped in, they still use that word right. Skype. I'm not <laughs> sure why they even keep that brand name, but that's a whole <laughs> nother story. He was Skyped in and it was a very interesting dialogue. One, two, it was not AWS, their big partner. Um, they're doing more business with, with Azure, so they're increasing their TAM. Uh, Databricks clearly going multi-cloud, so is right. Snowflake. This super cloud dynamic is happening. A Little bit kind of a, sub-message in the subtext of that kind of thing. And, and I got to tell you, a smart move by Databricks, by expanding in with Microsoft, they increased their total addressable market, they increased their customer base. You know, JP Morgan Chase, again, joint customer of right. Microsoft. Satya Nutella, showing his chops, his technical. 
bringing infrastructure knowledge. Microsoft leaning in, winning the messaging war, winning the marketing war, uh, it's pretty obvious to me that Microsoft clearly is outgunning AWS right now yeah. on the PR front. Uh, yeah. Absolutely controlling the messaging and causing other clouds to be on the defensive. Yes, yeah, definitely. They're reacting, they're being reactive, all the rest of the clouds, and I think you've, we've seen that over the last month and a half to two months, even maybe even a little bit longer, and I think really when you start to look at how Databricks and Microsoft are messaging, it's really similar messaging and how they're trying to bring LLMs to the masses and how they're trying to really bring uh, more out to them and be really clear about, hey, here's how you make it easy. And I think one of the big things was, even though they're not calling it an assistant, which is really, you know, they're inside of their Lakehouse AI and what they're trying to do with the assistant that can help you build the queries for your lake house, and I think that's key. It's their, their version of Copilot, and there was a lot of talk with Satya yeah. about Copilot, which makes a lot of sense. The other thing they announced was the marketplace, um, was a big part of their initiative. Again, it's open to everyone, and they kind of ding the clouds by saying lock in and saying the clouds only optimize for their clouds, which is true. Right. Um, so they're trying to build this federated kind of marketplace to be open. I thought that was interesting. Yep. Um, you know, that combined with the Delta sharing protocol, you got some interesting open source power dynamics going on. I think yeah. that's going to be something we're going to unpack a lot over the next second half of the year, Rob. I agree, I agree, and that not only that, but they're also their clean rooms initiatives, which is the Delta sharing, and when they started to look at Lakehouse apps, which they didn't, you know, Ali didn't really go into that much, but we, we kind of talked about it a little bit yesterday, which is, again, under the hood, it's Kubernetes. And when you start to look at it, it's going to help some Greenfield customers extremely quickly get into a marketplace and be able to have security and governance over that by running on yeah. Databricks' infrastructure. You know, I always like Databricks, I always like their approach, I always like the conversations, but one thing that's notably different, this event, is they're stepping up their game. They got Moscone, 12,000 people, it's packed, 75,000 people online, both south and north, packed venue. Their brand, they're stepping up. They, they could be a big player. They could be the dominant player in the, the modern data warehouse world, which is essentially cloud, data cloud. They could be the dominant player for what we're talking about a lot here on theCUBE is having data products in a marketplace. And then ultimately the, the term we coined called data developer, Rob, yeah. is really the emergence of what will be a new persona if these dots connect, if Ali Godsey's vision, combined with what Matt Garman told me in my exclusive, is that as this scale continues from data infrastructure reset with generative AI, the data products enabling a data developer, those apps are going to come online, they're going to be running on the cloud, this will be a new power dynamic, and the developer will be in charge of the data. We saw this with DevOps, we saw this with security now, shifting left, the new power dynamic will be the data developer. We're going to see it emerge in front of our eyes. We'll be covering it like a blanket here on theCUBE. Yeah, I think the data developer joined with uh, platform engineering, and what you have is them actually going out and engineering that data control plane. And I think with you know, Lakehouse Federation, one of the announcements today, it's another one where both them and Snowflake are competing for the heart and minds of both platform engineering and that, that data layer, data engineering layer, so. Yeah. Dave Vellante loves horse racing analogies, so we have <laughs> to go with one here. A lot of horses on the track, they're clustered up, they're all yeah. kind of like jockeying for position, they're all kind of in a, in, a, in, a, in a pack right now, some are ahead, some are not, but ultimately, the other dynamic is people might be switching horses. You know, yes. Amazon to Azure, this model to that model, choice is becoming a huge factor before putting things into production. We're still in discovery phase with generative AI and LLMs and foundation models. So again, tapering down the hype, which is all time high, yep. generative AI is a game changer. However, it's early, we're still in discovery mode with developers, we're seeing people thinking about do I have the right horse for this? Is this the right model for that? How do I tune it and scale it? How much is it going to cost? Is it ethical? Do I run it on the cloud? These are all questions that are being asked here and in the industry. Yeah, and it, it's fascinating with the customers that are here and having some conversations with them already. Really what they're betting on is how are we going to be able to keep our data private? That, that message was super strong in the keynote today about privacy, about you know, keeping your PII private, 
being able to actually monitor that, and I thought that was a neat little demo that they did uh, as part of that. I, I think, again, there's a lot of hype around it. There's a lot of things that need to be figured out. A lot of swirling conversations around which cloud's going to be the leader. Databricks is not, not holding back. They could be an emergent kind of super cloud layer across all clouds, something that we've been tracking. Um, I had an interview with Matt Garman who runs the heads up Amazon's field and sales and operations, um, former EC2, so he's got technical chops, kind of like Satya Nutella flexing his chops. I know Garman's got some technology chops, which is, you know, it gives him a unique position. He was echoing in my, my interview with him some of the same points that Ali Gatsi was saying on stage, and I want to get your reaction to these points, if yeah. you don't mind. One, the AI potential and ethical concerns. Yep. Um, I'll just run the list and we'll go through them. Securing data, amplifying choice. Augmenting human capabilities with AI versus replacing them. Uh, innovating around some constraints and op opportunities around GPUs. Little nuanced point we heard today. So let's start with AI ethics. Of, of yeah. course, adoption and consumption of AI. Right. So let's start with the ethics piece. What's your, uh, what's your take, what'd you hear here? They kind of had the proverbial, you know, Satya Nutella, whoa, you know, we got to be careful. You know, yeah. like, well, you I know how I feel about that. I, I think it, it's, it's, everybody wants to be careful, but I don't think anybody knows how to be careful yet. And I think it's early days in figuring this out. I think you'll see the industry come together uh, yeah. as regulation is ramping up. I mean, you already have the first yeah. bill of regulation going through the EU. Uh, I think they have to get in line and they have yeah. to nail the ethics part of this because it's really key to not having it over-regulated or pushed back or stamped down. I'll, I'll, I'll say what everyone's thinking. I think it's virtue signaling, I think it's BS. <laughs> I think there is no notion of regulation at this point. We yeah. got to get this stuff out of, out of the garage and into the streets, into production. We got to watch it, monitor it. That's the only issue. Regulation is a bad path for AI. I think that is complete horse, you know what. I think we got to avoid that. I think everyone's just virtuous. Oh yeah, we got to be careful. Yeah. That's code words for don't regulate us. So I think th that's one thing. The other thing that's the ethical issue that comes up that's not talked about is the intellectual property rights. This is what uh, exactly. Ali yeah. was all about today. Your IP is your data right. and their entire thesis of Lake House is don't put that into the LLM. Matt Garman at AWS also echoed that sentiment. It's like, hey, that corpus is public. Once the genie's out of the bottle, you can't put that back in. So this is a huge yes. issue around data and then how the data engineering, platform engineering, has to now refactor to drive these new data products. Yeah, and I think even Satya brought it up with watermarking and things like that and how do you deal with copyright, how do you deal with intellectual property. These are huge and I think that to your point, most people, I was talking to a healthcare organization just earlier you know, before coming on here and they were talking about how they're using Databricks but they're using it in a very private way because you're talking about people's healthcare information. You got to be careful with that and right now you can't be using you know, these SaaS delivered public models uh, that are proprietary to go and do this where you don't know where the data is going to end up. I got I to gotta talk about uh, adoption real quick, fostering consumption and adoption. Um, you heard that out there today, they're trying to push ease of use within the platform. These customers are diverse. JP Morgan is different than a startup, right? Yep. So you have you know, different diversity of solutions that are needed from the infrastructure layer all the way down to the up to the application layer. You're starting to see packaged solutions and hardcore code. So right. infrastructure, silicon, GPUs, to the application stack and everything in between is going to be a huge adoption. Yeah, and I think that you know they actually had some really interesting stats on stage. They're seeing from actual use inside of Databricks where you know seven exabyte or two exabytes of data is processed every day through Databricks and that in the last month they had 50, over 1500 uh, actual transformers used within the Databricks environment. That's showing you some of the adoption and how it's really accelerating. And that's up from 400 just earlier on in the year. So the other thing is cloud-enabled growth. One of the things that's come up is scale. Ali didn't really talk about it in the keynote because they're not the cloud, obviously they're an ISV, yeah. but as far as Amazon's concerned. But they got an ecosystem, 12,000 customers in person. So as you look at the cloud enablement here, you got to have the scale. And again, if people are going to be switching horses, do you, do, how do you decide how to run this stuff? On cloud, do you run it on Databricks, on which cloud? That becomes an interesting factor here. The clouds are enabling at the end of the day all this innovation. 
Right, yeah, and I think being across the clouds like you were talking about with SuperCloud, it does give you that data layer, that, that commonality of data layers across clouds. And I think that is a big key. They're not everywhere yet. I mean, there's still a lot of sovereign clouds that can't get Databricks. I think that that will be a challenge for them, being that control plane long term. But for you know, a good portion of the co you know, companies and countries, they actually do a good job of that. And we heard about Mosaic ML with the GPUs. Yeah, yeah you and I found out through the grapevine they got a stockpile of GPUs, um, but a lot of CapEx to build out. The GPUs are a big factor. One of the reasons why the cloud's looking good right now is AWS, and I'm sure Azure's got a bunch of GPUs. Yeah. They can offload the GPU needs as a managed service versus having it on site, and that's an opportunity for Mosaic ML here with Databricks on the training side. Right, yeah, I think it is, and I think where they're aiming to be the trainer, the builder, the underlying, uh, I guess you could say, infrastructure for AI ML versus trying to be the ultimate mo only model you use. So it's the bring your own model concept, but how do you get to success faster yeah. with your data? That's where they're focused. And final point is enterprise demands are very much in line here. JP Morgan on stage amplifying, almost gushing <laughs> over uh, Ollie's celebrityism. Uh, clearly a testimonial on stage. I mean, who's basically a walking data sheet yeah. for Databricks, highlighting the advantages of Lake House. Um, it was almost as he was reborn. Like, yeah. oh my God, <laughs> I came from the old way. I thought that was a very telling interview, yeah. really showing the needs of the enterprise is about governance and nailing some of the things we were talking about on our last cube, which is nail those foundational elements, and then you can enable the value. That's what the platforms offer, is that kind of enablement. That's a huge part of Ali's yeah. talk today. Yeah, I think they, they had Unity Catalog weaved without, within and throughout the entire keynote, and I think that they're standing on that as you know, a differentiator for them in how they bring that to market over all the data layer. What's your final thoughts on the interview? Uh, what'd you give it a grade? How would you rank it? Obviously they had a lot to go through. What's your thoughts? I, I, I'd give us a, a solid B. <laughs> I'd, I'd say we, we, we'll be bringing it up a notch as we go through yeah. the day and get with some more people yeah. and get some more interesting content going, but I think we, you know, again, we covered all of the interesting facts. Yeah, no, I'm talking about their keynote. Oh, their keynote? No, we're, no, we're an A, right. come on, we're, we're talking about B. We're an A. We're, an a. Uh, we're always I'm, I'm a a. hard grader. We always myself. got the A game but, uh, going on. I would say, I, I, I'd, give, I'd give Ali, I mean, again, they had so much to, to try to unpack. I think that it, it got a little muddled at times, but I, I'd give him a, a B. I think it yeah. was really good. I, I give him a solid A minus. It's hard yeah. to get. I'm hard to get an A out of. Yeah. I give him an A minus because and pushing an A uh, only because I thought they had the clock. They had a clock problem. So much to go through. I give him an A minus because one, J.P. Morgan was an incredible guest. Um, yeah. The way they were just glowing with testimonials. You don't. That's not staged. That's real. Yeah. That's authentic. Um, you, I can squint through that and say that was pretty real. Happy customer. His positioning was amazing. The uh, Mosaic ML acquisition on the heels of the event was a home run for Databricks. The venue, the posture, they're standing tall right now. And you know, if you're Snowflake, you got to wonder, you know, there's almost two, you know, two types of companies here, Databricks, Snowflake, both with different vibes. And, and you got to look at that and say, hmm, it's like the Republicans and the Democrats. It's like, you know, who's, who's on side you're going to pick? Yeah. Um, and they both work together though, so I thought that was a, a great right. move by them. And the content was very developer, education focused without placating to the crowd too much. They weren't, they weren't, um, they weren't like talking down to the crowd, they aligned with the developers. I think this data developer theme is right on point for them. I think they're going to wake up and realize that they have an ecosystem that's going to be with them for the next 20 years. And so that room was very much aligned with some of the early days of VMware, where you, right. it's a lot of demos, a lot of learning. So I thought A minus for sure, pushing an A, but again, the clock was, was tight, they had to yeah. go fast. Overall, great event. Yeah, I agree. I, I thought it was very energizing, to say the least. All right, that's theCUBE's keynote analysis here inside the lake house on the floor of the Databricks AI plus Data Event Summit. And we've got the, the CUBE ongoing coverage, two days, wall to wall. I'm Sean Furrier, host with Rob Stretching. We'll be right back with our next guest after this short break.